Okay, after trim the leg to fit the body of the teapot, now I'm ready to assemble the spout. And uh, this, first uh, I would uh, try to find a spot that is a little bit wider, the, sh the side. Okay, maybe this side is wider. So I would attach my spout right here. And uh, now I'm trying to figure out how much we need to, uh, I need to shape up. I usually put the spout behind my teapot so to cast a shadow so I get a roughly idea how much clay you will be able to cut it off. And maybe roughly draw a line on my spout. I like to use this kind of uh, tool, trimming tool, a knife to to cut off uh, the excess clay from the spout. This, this is my number seven trimming tools. Try to uh, put it on to see how much I could go. Okay, it's just a little gap. I don't know if you can see from the camera. There's a little gap here, and a little gap on this side. And uh, the proportion of the teapot looks okay to me. And now, for little gap, I have a little uh, a tip for you. Uh, get a hacksaw blade. This is the hacksaw blade, and uh, all the teeth here. You can still see. I leave the, the teeth here. And uh, you can use the hacksaw blade teeth to uh, scrape up the excess clay. And I try to put a hole here so that I know this is the, the side that I would uh, attach my spout. Okay, so this is fitting pretty well. Okay, so I would uh, hold the spout with my thumb here, hold it down, and then adjust it a little bit. And then I would draw along the joint where the spout is going to be positioned and mark a 
circle here. So this is where my spout is gonna be attached. And then now I'm using the hole puncher. This is the hole puncher to uh, punch the holes for filling the tea leaves. Um, I usually like to use that to make some and then here so I know that's the position I would cut the holes okay, to show you so now I would cut, go actually cut in the holes sorry for that noise need to get the clay out of the tube sometimes the clay is stuck inside the, this hole puncher see that inside the hole puncher I need to get rid of it okay some of the clay Still right there. I'm just use a needle two or two, push it off. So using the hole puncher to uh, cut all the holes. And now, where I'm gonna uh, join the spout, I get a needle two or two, score it. Slip off my yeah. so I'm getting some slip and put it on the brush and the brush the uh, slip on where I'm going to uh, join. Okay, so brush the slip over where I'm going to joint and attach my spout uh, before I press firm, firmly. I like to uh, adjust it, see if that position is right in the center of this side. Okay, so I will apply more pressure with my hand inside to support it. Okay, so that is attached, but I will do a better job by the uh, the joint line here and uh, 
this is the tool I usually use for getting the joint smooth actually this is a plastic knife I just um, use the sandpaper to sand down all the teeth so the side will be smooth and uh, I'm just using this to first <coughs> compress down from the spout portion and squeeze a little bit of clay from the spout And then smooth the corner here. Okay, so the joint it's uh compressed and it would be nice and uh, there's a, another tool that uh, I got from uh, Chinese clay art okay. this kind of tool it made out of rubber this is a bag of rubber and uh, I find out this is a very nice tool to uh, fine tune uh, where the joint is because the rubber can uh, smooth the corner even better than the uh, the plastic knife Okay, it's a nice uh, rubber tool to uh, smooth the corner, the joint of this bow and the body. Okay, so I put my lip back. And now, <coughs> for the spout here, I usually like to cut so that it's uh, slanted. And uh, that way it looks, the spout looks better. This to me looks unfinished. So I get my again number seven to me two to cut that bow. I try to check the level. Uh, I usually like to have this point and this point almost the same level. It's not just for the look, it's also for the function too. So that uh, if that's on the same level, when you feel the water, the water will not come out yet. But if your spout is too tall, uh, sometimes it's hard for water to come out. So that's for the function. And uh, you can use a, a knife there to uh, try to level and see which, how much clay you can cut it off. And if your, your spout is too low, then once you fill up the water, the, the water starts to come out from the spout already. 
which is no good either so you want to be uh, around about at the same level and also <coughs> since I throw my spout on the wheel so actually the clay has memory that uh, the clay remember w when you apply the, the stress on it so during the drying process or the firing process uh, actually that the clay will start to move okay and it will move the direction where you pour it okay so the, the wheel is spinning counterclockwise and I'm pouring this way so the clay remember so when uh, after fire the spout start to twist okay it will move and it will move the direction that you pour so it's going to be a uh, counterclockwise so when I'm cutting the spout actually I will cut this side okay the right hand side from my side okay this side <clears throat> the right hand side a bit lower so the spout goes like that and then after you after the spout twist okay hopefully it will twist to the right position so that's my idea of uh, my tip of cutting the spout if you throw your spout on the wheel After I cut it, I first will use a uh, sponge to try to smooth the cutting surface. And then I will use the brush to adjust it more of the spout using the brush That's the uh, spout after cutting an angle and uh, if you look at from here from your position this side actually is a little bit lower than this side and hopefully after fire it will twist I would say about uh, 12 degrees maybe between 10 to 15 degrees so it will twist that's how I attach the spout and later I will show you how I attach the uh, the handles too okay now uh, I'm ready to join the uh, handle for the teapot uh, I pull the handle and then I let it dry this way so that uh, when I'm cutting it it's almost into the shape and uh, actually this handle is still uh, uh, not too dry and not too wet it's uh, easy to handle and you can still uh, kind of bend it if you like so that's the stage I usually wait and uh, wait till this stage and then to attach the handle put the hole in the back so that I have uh, more of the uh, sander to know where is the sander gonna be
So again, um, brush some slip where the join is going to be. Um, before I uh, brush the uh, slip, I usually like to use my fingernail to kind of tap it. where the joint is going to be and tap my uh, handle so it opened up a little bit wider and put the slip over This is where the uh, handle is going to be. Um, let me make sure it's right in the center. Apply more pressure. for the button so I like to uh, score it so the joint is a little bit rough put some slip over there too and uh, make sure it's right in the center Um, before I compress fairly, I usually like to get a drip of water where that on the bottom where the joint is going to be. Get a brush there and the brush drip of water. Um, all I need to do is just compress it. Okay, um, you can see that uh, where the joint, because I tap it, so it's a little bit of a residual clay there. And uh, I'm not going to uh, smooth it now. I would wait uh, maybe a couple more minutes. And then once the, uh, the body draw some water from the handle, and they will even out, and then I will start to smooth uh, the joint. But for now, I will just uh, just let it sit for a couple of minutes. So I waited two, three minutes. So this part will be a little bit drier, and uh, I could just use a, a needle tool to spread it.
can brush some water here right by the joint. So this is the um, six-sided teapot from the beginning to the finish. And you can see that adding the spout, adding the handle. Okay, thanks for watching.